When I first got serious about editing photos, I would read blogs and websites and that sort of thing, and I kept seeing this term luminosity mask being tossed about, and I was intimidated. I was afraid, to be fair, because it seemed like a scary thing that I didn't understand. But over time, as I've started to use them in my editing, I've come to find that it is an incredibly powerful and perhaps the most powerful type of mask that there is. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw. I'm going to walk through how you can use the luminosity mask function to really edit a photo. So we're going to talk about what a lumino uh, luminosity mask is, why you may want to use it, and of course how to use it. So here is a photo. Now I'm uh, not going to do anything to the photo in develop. I do recommend that you do that first. But if you look at my before and after, there's no difference because I've done nothing. I'm going to start in local adjustments. And I use luminosity masks both in local adjustments and also in effects. Now, the first thing is, what is it? A luminosity mask is just a mask built on light values, which makes a ton of sense. Because if you think about other masking options, sometimes you might isolate an object or a, a type of thing in a photo, which is great because you might want to edit that thing. And that's useful and helpful. But... I like luminosity masks best simply because they're um, masks built on light values, as I said. And what are we doing with our camera besides running around and just capturing light? And so being able to target specific tones, highlights, mid-tones, shadows, areas all across that spectrum is incredibly powerful. And I think as you start to use it, you'll start to see how applicable it is in your day-to-day -day editing. So I'm going to start out by adding an adjustment here in local adjustments. And I'm just going to go ahead and move this to a, like a positive, you know, whatever that is. I'm just increasing the exposure. But you're not seeing anything yet, and that's because the mask is black. So the, the most important thing to remember in masking is black conceals and white reveals. You've probably heard me say this before if you've been here for any of my other masking videos. But when it says black conceals, anything that's in black in your mask is concealed or hidden, which means whatever adjustment you make like that increase in exposure will not apply where it's black white reveals so anything that's white of course it will show that positive uh, increase in exposure the great thing about luminosity masks is that there's an entire spectrum of gray from the black to the white and that's really what luminosity masks do they help you customize the mask and address those kind of gray areas to different degrees let me show you what i'm talking about so I'm going to click on the mask icon. It's going to open the masking window. And the first one, of course, is the invert mask. But the next one is that little light bulb. And that is as it hovers and it says create luminosity mask. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it now created a luminosity mask, which you cannot see because I need to click on this little goggle icon that says view mask. When I do, you're going to see my photo represented in black and white. Well, it didn't turn my photo black and white. This is the mask. And these are the shades of gray that I'm talking about. Black conceals, white reveals. So down here in this little bit of a tree line, that's a lot darker, so it's getting very little. It's not completely black, but it's getting very little of the adjustment because black conceals. Whereas up here, like these clouds that are really bright, that's probably just about uh, really white. So that's getting probably 100% of my adjustment. And the, again, the most interesting and powerful part of this is all these shades of gray that you see are varying degrees. The closer that gray is to black, the less of the edit it's going to get. And the closer that gray is to white, or the lighter gray it is, the more of the edit that's going to get. So if I turn off this view, and now I'm going to come down to this filter where I'm just going to actually increase the exposure more so you can make it see it more visibly. And I'm going to turn this off. So just look at the photo, and you'll see there's the original and there is the current state. You'll notice that really the tree line didn't get brighter, and that's because in the mask, it's mostly black. And so that's what I'm talking about. Now, I don't recommend coming in and doing that big of an adjustment. I was doing that for visibility purposes, but you know, I'll, I'll move it up about one stop, and that looks pretty fine. I lifted the exposure one overall, except because it's a luminosity mask, it's not applying everywhere. It's just applying to varying degrees, primarily just in the sky. And again, that's because that ridge line or tree line is mostly in the black or the really dark parts of the luminosity mask, so it's getting very little impact of the edit. 
Now, I said that I use these in a couple of different places. I like to use luminosity masks uh, both in the local edits, but also in effects. Those are the places, apart from develop, where I spend the majority of my time editing here and on one. But develop, there's no masking. It is your raw file development. I recommend doing that first, as I said. I'm skipping it just for demonstration purposes. But what I wanna do now, let's say I wanna go and add some dynamic contrast. So that's a great effect that I like a lot. And on one, add filter. And I'm gonna come over to dynamic contrast. And it's gonna populate that. And it adds a little bit here by default. But I wanna go in and mask that again. And I actually don't wanna add positive dynamic contrast. I want to remove dynamic contrast or make it negative because that kind of smooths out the photo. I wanna apply that to the sky. So once again, I'm gonna click on masking and I'm gonna go up here and click on luminosity mask. And then I'm gonna click on view. And there we go, there's my mask. Exact same mask as I had before. And if I wanted to use that, uh, again, I could just come over here from on that previous uh, local adjustment tab with that first mask I made, I could click copy. And then with this tool here or dynamic contrast on effects, I could click paste and have the same mask. And so I could have done that to save time, but I wanted to build it again just to show you that. But here's one of the things, uh, two of the things really that I like the most about the luminosity mask function. And that is you have the ability to come in and really refine these masks. So there's four settings up here. Density is kind of like opacity or strength. At 100, the entire mask is uh, being applied across the photo. Again, based on varying degrees because it's a luminosity mask. But you will see quickly that if I take this down to uh, 51, you'll see that everything got a lot lighter. I didn't fade my photo, I faded the strength of the mask. So the stuff that was really bright is not quite as getting the same amount of impact. It's getting basically, uh, if I'm at 50 here, then 50% of the strength of the mask is being applied to the same equal degree based on the luminosity mask. So in other words, the tree line, which had very little, is still pretty dark. The sky, which had a whole lot more, is still pretty bright. So that's what density does. If I bring this way down, it gets a whole lot lighter. And of course, at 100, that's the entire luminosity mask. So that is kind of like a strength slider. And then feathering, it just smooths out the edges and that's really useful because it will blend the uh, edges of the different tonal zones together or tonal areas so you get a really smooth transition. It's gonna look like my photo is getting blurry. My photo is not getting blurry. The mask is getting blurry because it's softened up or feathered the edges in order to make for a really smooth transition. Truthfully, I don't really use those two settings on luminosity masks really ever at all. And that's simply because the luminosity mask for me is kind of doing that transition and that density for me because it's a targeted by light values. And I've got all these shades of gray, which is kind of smoothing things out for me. You can adjust it if you want to with those two tools. I tend not to do that with luminosity mask. But the other two uh, sliders here, levels and window, incredibly important and super useful. Now, levels is basically allowing you to further customize the black point and the white point and basically target more specifically certain tonal areas. We've already got a great job of getting this uh, mask built for the highlights because it's a luminosity mask. So the mask goes into the brighter areas, the luminous areas, and it doesn't go into the darker areas, which is the trees. But if you want to customize that to really be more targeted, levels is your new best friend. Now, this takes a little bit of practice and experimentation, but I'm just gonna show you. You can grab this slider. Note this slider starts with black on the left side and goes to white on the right side. So these are your shadows or your black areas, your mid-tones, and then on the uh, far right side, like your whites or your highlight areas. So if I start dragging, now remember, I'm still in mask view. This is gray overlay for my photo. My photo is still in color. This is the mask view. But if I start dragging levels to the right, this black slider, I should say, from the left, if I start dragging it to the right, you'll see what's happening is I'm getting a lot more intensity in the dark areas and I'm creating more black. And so what I'm doing is, as you can see here, I've effectively created a bit of a silhouette in that area. There's a little bit bleeding over into the sky, so I can maybe pull that back a little bit in order to still leave some effect in the sky. But I can also adjust the midpoints uh, or, or the mid-tones here with the level slider. And you can see pretty quickly I'm creating essentially a silhouette uh, with this mask because white reveals black conceals. So the darker black gets much less of the effect. And if it's completely black, which it almost is, it's gonna get zero of the effect. 
I can also play with the highlights though and come in from this other side and start to crank that, which is gonna create a whole lot of really white stuff in the sky, which means that's gonna get 100% of the effect. So all levels is, is a customization slider to allow you to fine tune your mask and target specific parts of the photo based on those tonal values. So uh, make it your best friend. I recommend doing that. It's incredibly useful and it's something that I love to use. Uh, now window is a little bit different. This basically compresses the window in which your mask is gonna reside. And so what I mean, mean by that is, again, there's the dark parts or the shadows on the left and the, the uh, bright points or the white parts, if you will, highlight areas on the right. And all I do here is I'm also adjusting the black point, but as I drag these two points from either end towards the middle, anything outside of that, so anything that's gonna be to the left of this left slider is gonna become pure black, and anything to the right of this right slider is also gonna become pure black. And so if I wanted to target the midtones, hey, I just targeted the midtones. I said, hey, highlights, I don't want you in this mask. Hey, shadows, I don't want you in this mask. I just want the mid-tones. And so I could really tighten this up if I wanted to and drag this over here and really get a bit more specific. And you can see how I can really highlight, highlight's the wrong word, isn't it? Uh, target specific areas in the photo. So my window, and that's why it's called window, my window of where my mask is gonna exist for this photo is inside or between these two little points here. So again, it's another bit of customization and frankly fun that you can have an experimentation that you can have with the masking uh, tool slider here, levels and window to really customize the look of that. So if I wanted to add dynamic contrast just to the sky, I could probably do something about like that. And honestly, I'm happy. That's a good looking mask. Basically black silhouette for the tree line. The uh, sky has a luminosity mask, various shades of gray. So I can turn off that mask and I can come over here and I can go negative with all these sliders and just create a really smooth sky because maybe I want a smooth sky and I do like my smooth sky. Uh, but that's just a way to target it. So there it is before dynamic contrast and there it is now. I don't know if it's smooth enough for you to tell, but you can kind of hopefully see that here. Uh, and let's say I'm now, I've still got that mask. I'm gonna click copy. So I've copied that mask that I just customized and I'm gonna come over here to add a new filter, and I'm gonna click on Sunshine and add that. And then I'm gonna click on the masking icon to come over here, and I'm gonna click Paste. So I've just taken that same mask that I used in the other tool, and I applied it here in Sunshine, and I'm just gonna bump up the saturation and the, the warmth and the amount, and just create a little bit more of that sunshiny look here in the sky. And I'm not doing a full edit here, I'm just kind of playing but hopefully that's visible enough. So if I turn off sunshine, there it is before, and turn it back on, there it is now. And again, if I ever wanna go see my mask, there it is. And if I wanted to further refine it, I can do that. I can adjust these uh, windows or levels in order to get my mask look in the way that I want it to look. Maybe I want it something a bit more like that. And if I turn this off, then the overall look of my edit with sunshine is gonna be slightly different than it was because I just adjusted the mask, which is telling on one, hey, slightly move that around based on these tonal values. So the brighter stuff in the mask that's closer to white gets more of this sunshine effect. The gray stuff varies from light gray to dark gray in terms of intensity. And of course, the stuff that's in black in the mask gets none of it. And so again, it's a way to customize the overall look of your photo. And now let's say, Hey, I was talking about that silhouette, but it's not really a perfect silhouette because I didn't do any silhouette kind of moves in that little section. So if I go back and look at my mask, yeah, I kind of like that. I'm gonna copy that mask, and now I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna open another filter, and this time it's gonna be Tone Enhancer. Boom, there's my Tone Enhancer. And I'm gonna click on the masking icon to get into the masking menu, and I'm gonna click Paste. And so if I show you the mask, there it is, but that's not what I want. I wanna create a silhouette, which means I want all the stuff that you see in dark in the uh, tree line, I actually want that to be white. In other words, I wanna invert this mask. So I'm just gonna click the invert mask button. Now I've got an inverted mask and I can still come in here and play with the different parts of window. Maybe I can pull this down as well. Nope. When it's inverted, you have to really experiment because I don't know about you, but it really kind of messes with my uh, 
my sense of uh, direction, for lack of a better term. So I think something like that is basically creating a pretty much a black sky, but a white tree line, which is what I want to do because I want the mask to apply on the tree line and not in the sky. So I can turn off view mask, haven't done anything, so I can just come over here and I can take this exposure slider down and I'm essentially creating a silhouette along that tree line because I isolated that with the luminosity mask that I inverted and then customized. So when you're done, you can close up any tools that you want. You can close the masking menu. And if you look at the before and the after, there's the before and of course, there's the after. I would do a lot more to this photo. I'd play around with the color in the sky, of course, because it's a sunset and I like to do that. But what I really wanted to do is walk through the masking capabilities of luminosity masking, talk about what it is, talk about why to use it, and of course, how to use it. I've covered all that here. I hope that helps you, my friends. And I highly recommend that you spend some time experimenting with luminosity masks because you will find that as you uh, advance in your editing skills, you wanna get more and more fine grain control over different aspects of your photo. And I really believe that luminosity masking is the best way to do that. Because again, it's all light in these photos. That's what we're playing with and manipulating and editing. And if you can target things based on their light values with these kind of masks, you get really, really awesome control over it. Hope it helps. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon, my friends. You guys take care, and until the next video, adios.